Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, for our first full weekend of spring, many across the United States felt a, a repeat of winter of this year. You're looking at a map that shows the last 48 hours of total accumulated snowfall across the country. This does not include the big snows that we saw at the end of last week that stretched from parts of Colorado here toward Wisconsin, but it does include the quick-hitting system that came around the back side of this, bringing some snow to a place right in through here that I think wishes they were done with snow. As we think about what this pattern looks like, take a look at this. We've seen a lot of warmth over the last week build into Alaska. That is one key area to watch for change in the next 10 to 15 days. The cold air that was there snuck through the Canadian prairies and invaded the north central part of the United States. And with repeated shortwave troughs that keep cutting through California, really increasing precipitation amounts, our storm track has really been just like this, right between the very warm conditions over the southeast, which did last over the weekend, and the much colder air to the north and west. And that's going to be a pattern we're going to watch continually set up throughout this week, which means we've got another wet week ahead of us. But this pattern is breaking down, and I want to talk about that here in a few moments. Because this is what it did to us over the last seven days. Extremely heavy rain in Texas and Oklahoma from there toward the Ohio River Valley. And the precipitation that came into California has been fantastic. We still need about double what we've gotten so far to make up for the longer-term deficits. So we need to see if we're going to continue to get not only active weather in terms of more snow in the northern central part of the United States, but more rain to the south. And will we see more severe weather? Because we did get right in through here, several reports of very strong to severe thunderstorms with Friday's system, as well as right in through this area, where we also got all of that very heavy rain, two areas we were watching out for at the end of last week. What we're going to be discussing this week, especially in our long range update, is the new spring 2020 outlook from NOAA. So this was released uh, on Friday, and it shows a very interesting pattern in terms of precipitation here wet east and, and dry to the west, but it's got an interesting slant to it. And it appears right now that they're following the forecast from the National Multimodel Ensemble. You can see a very similar setup with the drier pattern here and the wetter pattern in through this area. We need to talk about the performance statistics of this model, in other words, how well it's done in the past, and what is the likelihood of that forecast from NOAA verifying. Because in addition to that, we'll add our understanding of what our current spring flood threat has been. Because right now, we do have quite a few of our river gauges that are at or near flood stage. Is this normal? Uh, what does it sit compared to a year ago? Because certainly one major difference between this year and last year is snowpack. So through the weekend, we can see that our snowpack, our deep snowpack, where much of our water is in the snow, is still sitting over parts of eastern North Dakota, northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the UP of Michigan. And that is way different from a year ago, which means our spring flood fight and flood threat is going to be different from 2019. We also need to discuss this temperature pattern. This is the April 2020 through June 2020 uh, temperature pattern. And the big question is, are we going to continue to let that colder air out coming through the north central part of the United States out of the Canadian prairies? Or is there a pattern adjustment that will be occurring? All of that coming midweek this week in our long range update. As we look back in the near term, this is the forecast uh, from the European model over the next uh, week. So this gets us out to next Monday morning. Unfortunately, places that have been extremely wet, so I'm talking about parts of uh, you know, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, uh, eastern Oklahoma, stretching all the way into the Ohio River Valley toward Pennsylvania. More systems coming through this week. In fact, multiple chances of rain this week. And then the one place that doesn't need to see another drop of rain, I'm talking about eastern Texas through Tennessee and parts of the Appalachian Mountains very wet. We will have snow on the back side of this. We'll also have snow coming through the Canadian prairies. And finally, after a drier week, bring in more precipitation into the Pacific Northwest. So we do have some change to be discussing here, but right now that change is not yet fully realized in this animation. What are you looking at? These are the winds in the jet stream level today. And what we're going to watch is the northern branch of the jet stream. So I'm talking about this piece up here seems to be bunched up in the North Pacific, while the stronger, more zonal part of the subtropical jet stream cuts underneath it right over this large ridge sitting over Mexico. We're going to watch for several short waves to come out of this. So so we're going to watch a system come through the Canadian prairies here at the same time as we watch a little short wave sneak out of the west and cut across, giving us a multi-day uh, severe weather uh, potential uh, across the United States. Really, that's going to be a little farther to the south like that. And then we're going to watch these two waves come together at the end of the week and sweep through the midsection of the United States, giving us one last big system by Friday into Saturday. 
So what we're going to be watching for after that, well, after that, this is the feature, okay? So right here is the big storm system that comes through at the end of this week. I want you to keep a close eye on what's happening in Greenland and in the North Atlantic. We might end up seeing uh, the negative phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation showing up here first time in a while. And we're also going to pay attention to what happens between the Aleutian Islands and the Arctic. It's going to be an interesting dynamic there because... This is the setup by the time we get out to April 2nd. So specifically, we're going to watch this ridge and this ridge. And if the tropospheric polar vortex becomes stacked with the stratospheric polar vortex, what that mean, might mean for temperatures over Alaska. And, you know, we watch Alaska very carefully because it's a kind of the bellwether for the rest of the pattern across the lower 48. And what does that mean for our temperatures and precipitation patterns as we move into the month of April? Because take a look at this. This is week two only. So we're now talking about really just the first full week of April. We see that the changes in in the jet stream pattern might possibly give much of the main ag belt in the middle part of the country. So I'm talking about this area and through here, maybe a, a drier run into that week. Now I'm not saying dry, uh, but just drier than what we have seen. I drew on the European, excuse me, on the GFS ensemble on the left, the European ensembles over there on the right. One thing that, that both models are agreeing on is the strong subtropical jet stream flow is still going to keep parts of this, our southern region quite wet over to the southeast with the pattern that's setting up into week two. So let's keep a close eye on this and let's work our way through some of the details. Late, late tonight into early tomorrow morning, we're going to be watching this part of Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri for the potential for some strong to severe storms. The, the thunderstorm threat actually extends down here into the southeast as well. As we progress into the day on Tuesday, we're going to see that translate here a bit farther to the east and get over into parts of Tennessee, northern Mississippi, and Alabama. So let's take a look at that first. As we play this forward, let's pause it mid-morning this morning. Light snow early this morning moving through parts parts of lower Michigan here and then you see rain a pretty cold rain through Ohio stretching back into Tennessee and Kentucky and through here and then down into parts of Texas meanwhile scattered showers over here in the mid-Atlantic and here is our southern first wave that's going to eject so we're talking about the one that's coming out of uh, parts of California so this is early this morning let's play this through mid-morning so this is now mid-morning through early afternoon so we're going to watch the first system move toward the north and east snow in the interior and then cold Cold rain through parts of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, getting back into parts of Maryland, and then you can see it stretching through the Appalachian Mountains down here into parts of Mississippi and Alabama. So that system moves off to the north and east, leaving scattered showers in its wake. Now here we are 7 p.m. this evening on Monday. And we're going to see this next system, which you saw in California, now moving through Colorado, such that by very late tonight, it is moving into Kansas and Oklahoma. See it there? So this is in the very early morning hours. We do have the chance for some strong thunderstorms. Uh, of course, nocturnal overnight here. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye in this area. As we progress through mid-morning on Tuesday into early afternoon, we're going to see that severe weather threat maybe translate over here into parts of Tennessee. So we're going to watch this area. To the north of it, a chilly rain pushing through this part of the country, right in through here. Meanwhile, that bigger wave I told you about is still sitting and spinning off the coast here. And while the lead wave on the northern side of it may bring some light snow in through this area, we're going to let that push on through. And we're going to see how this next wave sets itself up by Wednesday right here in the midsection of the United States. So this southern branch one moves toward the north and east. You can see the widely scattered showers here with some maybe embedded snow here at higher elevation in Pennsylvania. But then we're going to be watching after this, those other two waves come sweeping through. So let's get to them with our European model here. Let's pause it right there. This is now Wednesday, um, at, uh, Wednesday morning. So we've seen up to this point. So we can now pay attention to what's happening on the back side of these first two systems. Here we go. This is Wednesday afternoon and evening. There we are. So this system here moving through the Hudson leaves a cold front right in through this area. Some snow in South Dakota moving through Minnesota, northern Wisconsin with a cold rain on the south side of that. And again, this is Wednesday night. Meanwhile, that earlier system has moved off the coast. Still, the deeper trough is still hanging out back west. A lot of mountain snows here and valley rains out west by the time we get to Wednesday evening. So what do we see? This is now Thursday morning. Thursday afternoon and evening. 
Now working our way into Thursday night into Friday morning. There we go. Now this is when that full wave finally moves out in the midsection of the United States. And we're going to watch Friday afternoon and evening for it to fully take shape here over Kansas and Oklahoma. Models ensemble support pretty good for the development of this system. A lot of rain out ahead of this. This is Friday. A lot of rain out ahead of this. And then as we push into Saturday, we could be watching for strong to severe thunderstorms to the south of this, moving through the lower Mississippi River Valley by Saturday afternoon and evening, and another storm system that pulls through the United States heading off to the north and east. Now after this, I'm going to show you what the models are currently playing at for early next week. So big high pressure system comes through and starts to dry things out March 30th, okay? But you're going to notice that the models want to put another system, two other systems, one running through the Canadian prairies and one cropping up down here over the south and east. Now, at this point, we're pretty far out in the forecast, and I'm just going to let you know there's not strong ensemble support for either of these two lows. So we're going to watch them both carefully, but you've already seen the week two forecast painting some drier conditions in through here. So we need to watch both of these areas carefully. This again would be uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. All right. So from there, I want to talk about potential for some snowfall this week. So this gets us out through Sunday evening. We're looking at the probability of getting at least three inches of snowfall. So with that system that's coming out, that's moving through the Canadian prairies, then leaves its frontal boundary in through here. You can see that as the next system rides on it, we could get some snow here in the uh, Rocky Mountains that then comes out right in through this area. And the potential for getting at least three inches is relatively low across the prairies, but it increases as you get here in northern Wisconsin into the UP of Michigan. And a lot of what you see over here is coming from the system today that's moving through parts of the Northeast. You do notice a bit of a void in through here. It's not as though there won't be any snow. It's just an extremely low probability of getting at least three inches in parts of the southern Canadian prairies. All right. From there, California not quite adding up as much as we've seen recently in terms of snowfall, but the systems that are then coming into the northwest here really piling it up in the Cascade Mountains as we progress through uh, the next seven days. So let's talk temperatures before we do a, a bit of a global outlook here. I want to show you again departure for normal. I find this to be more intuitive than looking uh, directly at the actual temperatures because it gives us a sense as to what we compare to in terms of normal. So this is Monday's departure for normal. So you can see cool in the northeast, still very warm in the south, and with that deeper trough still sitting off the west coast, still keeping the cooler temperatures there. What do we see as the week progresses? Well, this is Tuesday's departure from normal. Look at by Wednesday, big warm up for a big section of the United States. Colder air coming in on the back side of this, okay, through parts of Montana into the Dakotas, and the West Coast still staying 10 to 20 degrees below normal. And as we press through Thursday's departure from normal into Friday, you can see the South is just hanging on to these very, very warm conditions throughout this week. Getting ourselves into the weekend. This is now when the bigger storm system emerges here on Saturday, okay? So you can see the real warm up out ahead of this and the cool down on the back side. But remember, that system lifted north and east, which is why Sunday's departure from normal kind of tends to look pretty darn close to average. What about beyond this? Let's go take a look at the day five through 10 pattern. Here's where the change is happening first. It's over Alaska. Remember me showing you the trough digging in there while the ridge pushes into the Aleutian Islands and the ridge pushes here into Greenland? That is going to be basically removing uh, the, the main waves through the flow and shoving them to the north. And that's why at that time period, we see much of the lower 48, the Canadian prairies, even maybe seen near average to above average temperatures. The cooler weather's tucked away down here into parts of Southern California getting over to Western Texas. Now, to show you day 12 through 14, I'm going to give you a little bit different look. We're seeing this pattern evolve days 12 through 14. So again, this is uh, April 2nd through the 5th, such that the changes in the North Atlantic might bring some warmer conditions out west and near average to cooler than average weather temporarily into the eastern part of the United States. The good news is, look at that map over there on the right. This is that drier time period in through here that we were talking about that's into week two. So the model support is also shown here in an analog forecast. As we pull this out into the longer range, what we're now looking at here is days 11 through 15, okay? And at that time period, the biggest change is happening over Alaska, as we discussed. 
So now we see that warmth pushing in through this part of the United States. And the reason for the cooler weather in through here is kind of detailed up there in my notes at the top. We're seeing a bit of a change in the North Atlantic while the big ridge builds up over the Aleutian Islands. And that change in the North Atlantic may allow for some cooler weather to finally come into the south and east. Now, when I say cooler, just a few degrees cooler than average. We're not talking about a major cool down. The tropics really aren't helping out that much with this longer term pattern. But I want to pay a close attention to bullet point number two. I'm going to discuss that in great detail in Wednesday's update, and that could be critical for our spring outlook. What are the global winds doing, and why is the QBO going negative, and what does that mean? We're going to talk about all of that. To finish this up, though, a couple of areas globally I want you to be keeping an eye out on. We're noticing over the next 15 days, part of China here is looking extremely wet, so some early spring uh, flooding here. And as we move into fall in the southern hemisphere, we can see down here in parts of southeastern Australia, things are looking quite wet in the near term uh, as well. But I'm going to stop with our video here by looking at South America. Over the next week, our stressed regions down here in Parana and Rio Grande do Sol still showing up on the drier side of things, while regular rains moving through parts of Mato Grosso and the northern and eastern parts of Brazil's growing area. Uh, we've already seen them pull back on estimates for both corn and soybeans in the two states that I circled there. But the big question looms, will we be bringing in decent rainfall into week two? Two into this area. So we'll be taking a look at that all week to see if the forecast pattern continues to evolve that way for South America. But with that, we'll go ahead and wrap it up right here. Hope you all have a great week. Look forward to talking to you each day this week. Have a good one. Thank you.